I've been on the hunt for a good local offline voice control that works with Home Assistant for a long time now, with all of the ones I've tried before being rather lacklustre. But recent updates to Home Assistant have made having your own privacy focused voice assistant much more accessible than before. And what's shocking is, it's actually really easy. Kinda. Raspi is an open source, local and fully offline voice assistant created by Mike Hansen with a focus on privacy. Now you have actually been able to use Raspi with Home Assistant for a while now, but the recent 2022.8 update made things a bit easier to get started. Now there are two different versions of Raspi. One is super easy to set up, but more basic in its functionality. And one is more involved, shall we say, to set up, but does give you a lot of extra features. I'm going to show you how to do both methods from the start to finish, and even how to create your own custom voice command that Home Assistant will respond to. So let's do that. The first thing we need is a microphone and speaker. You can use a separate microphone and speaker if you want to, or you can get something like this conference speaker that has a microphone and speaker all in one unit and plugs into the USB port. USB will work best, and remember if you're using the Home Assistant Yellow, it does have the audio jack, but that is for a speaker only and doesn't support a microphone, so you would need to add a separate speaker through the USB port. The conference speaker I have is one I bought from Anchor and is really good quality, but it's pretty expensive for this particular application, so you could get a much cheaper one on Amazon that will do a good job at a better price. So you will need to plug in your speaker and microphone to your Home Assistant install, and you're probably thinking, well, I have one Home Assistant server in my house, so what happens if I want to have a speaker in multiple rooms? Do I have to have a Home Assistant server in multiple rooms? It's a great question, so Raspi can run standalone on a Raspberry Pi or anything you want really, and you can have multiple of them dotted around your house. You can even run it on a Pi Zero to make the whole thing pretty cheap. We are going to be focusing on how to install it on Home Assistant OS for this particular video so that you can try it out and see if it's something that you want to take further, but I'll leave install instructions down below for other platforms if you are interested. If you just plugged in your speaker and microphone into Home Assistant when it was running, you will need to make sure and restart the OS for them to be detected. Once rebooted, head over to Settings, Add-ons, click the plus button and then click the three dots in the top right hand corner and select Repositories. Paste in the Raspi repository which I'll have linked down in the description and if you refresh the page you should see that you have a bunch of new add-ons available to you. At this point this is where we need to decide which version of Raspi we are going to install. We have the simple but easy way for basic control or the more advanced but more difficult way for more customization. I'll show you both methods, but in a nutshell, if all you want to do is have basic voice control for turning on lights, opening and closing covers, controlling switches, and things like that, then the Raspberry Junior is what you're looking for. If you're looking to have custom commands or custom wake words, and really be able to control everything, then the full version is for you. I do warn you though, it's not that easy, so if you are a beginner, you may want to try out the Junior version first. Starting with Raspberry Junior, select Raspberry Junior from the add-on list and hit install. Once installed, go to the configuration tab and then select your input and output device. In this instance, I'm selecting my speaker and microphone combo. Then start the add-on and check the logs. Once started, head to settings, devices and services, add a new integration and add the Raspberry integration. This was added recently in 2022.8, so you will need to make sure that you are on that version or later to be able to use it. Once added, you may or may not need to restart Home Assistant for that to take effect, and then you should be able to say, hey Mycroft, turn off the office TV lights, and it should execute that action for you. There is no confirmation voice or sound coming from the speaker, at least there wasn't for me in Raspi Jr., but actions do work very quickly and they do work well. Hey Mycroft, turn on the office TV lights. Huh. If you check out the add-on logs, you should see records of those actions happening and what the speaker picked up and translated from speech to text. 
That's pretty much all there is to Raspi Jr. Super easy to set up and works pretty well and seems to be pretty accurate from what I've tested so far. I do wish that there was voice from the speakers on the junior version that would give you confirmation of an action happening, but maybe we will see that in the future. Now let's set up the full fat version and see what Raspi can really do. Again, I do warn you that this is not very simple or straightforward to do and is quite complicated to get a full understanding of all of the options. So be warned, we are going to move a bit faster through this one and I'm going to assume that you are a bit more advanced. For this to work, you're going to need to have SSH enabled on Home Assistant with the SSH and Web Terminal add-on and make sure that you have protected mode disabled so that we can add a Raspi script. By the way, if you're running Raspi Junior installed and running from the previous step, make sure to stop that add-on first so that they don't conflict with each other. Install the Raspi add-on and then head to the configuration tab and scroll down and then select your speaker and microphone from the dropdown and hit save. Then start the add-on and head to logs. Refresh the logs until you see a line mentioning that the web UI has started and you can then head back to the main page and click the open web UI button and you will land at the main dashboard for Raspi. This is where you will configure the settings for Raspi and enable different options depending on your needs. Up at the top, you have the black bar, which indicates the status of different components and if they are enabled or not. And then on the left-hand side is where you can configure things like custom words, sentences, slots, as well as access the settings. From the main page, you can also test out the voice recognition as well as the text-to-speech functionality. Before we go any further in the Raspi UI, let's first enable the Raspi integration in Home Assistant if you didn't do so earlier by going to settings, devices and services, add integration and search for Raspi and install it, making sure you are on 2022.8 or later. Back on the Raspi dashboard, we first need to enable the key services for Raspi to work. In the left hand menu, click the settings button and then let's just start at the very top and work our way down. Select the audio recording drop down and then select Pi Audio, which is the recommended option. In fact, go ahead and enable the recommended settings for wake word, speech to text, intent recognition, text to speech, audio playing and dialogue management. Then under intent handling, select home assistant. And once all of those have been set, hit save settings and then restart. We can pretty much leave the recommended settings as is. That's why they are the recommended settings. But there is a couple that we can tweak that I found do work a little better. Firstly, under the wake word options, select the available keywords and then select any of the options from the list. This is the word that you will use to actually wake the speaker up and have it start listening for voice commands. It's also possible to add your own custom wake word too, but that's outside the scope of this guide for now. I would recommend going in and changing the speaker voice from the US to the UK one. The US voice is quite robotic and the UK one does sound ever so slightly a little bit more natural, at least to me, so I like to go in and change that setting. Then save settings and up at the top, you will notice that there are some files missing that need to be downloaded. So hit the download button and let those files download to your device. And these are the training models for the speech to text recognition that allow it to process things locally. At this point, you can now say your wake word and the speaker should activate. And if you keep an eye on the home page, you should see whatever you say now appear into the box. Notice how you also get sound through the speaker this time instead of silence so that you know that the speaker has been triggered. Nothing will actually happen at this moment in time because we haven't configured anything yet, but it does confirm that speech to text is working along with the speaker. On the home page, you can also press the play recording button to hear the last thing that was said. And you can also trigger the wake up process by pressing the button on the home page too. Now we need to actually configure and set this up with Home Assistant before we can do anything. Head back to settings and then click on the intent handling section. And you'll see that we have two settings, the Home Assistant URL and the access token. So by default, if you are installing this on Home Assistant OS, these will already be working and auto detected out of the box, but I'm going to show you how to change these manually in case you aren't. So in the URL box, simply enter the URL that you use to access Home Assistant, making sure to enter HTTPS if you are using HTTPS 
as well as your port number at the end. Then for the access token, we are going to head back to Home Assistant, select your user profile, scroll down to the long live access token section, and then generate a new token. Make sure to copy this token fully, save it, and then head back to Raspi and paste it into the box and hit save settings. Now try to give Raspi a voice command such as turn on the kitchen lights, and then in Home Assistant, head to settings, system, logs, and you should now see an error relating to what's called an intent. And on the bottom line, you will see that it says unknown intent. Basically, it can't find the action for this voice command. Let's go ahead and fix that now. We first need to create what's called a sentence. Sentences are basically custom phrases that you set up in Raspi to handle requests. So turn the lights on, turn the switch off, set the lamp to red, etc, etc. Luckily, Raspi provides us with some good starting examples. Head over to the Raspi GitHub linked in the description and go to examples and then home assistant. Select the profile folder and then sentences.ini file. Copy the contents of this file and head back to Raspi and then select sentences from the left hand menu. Then click the new sentences file button and enter home assistant as the name. Then paste the contents of the file in and hit save. Raspi will then ask you if you want to retrain it, just hit cancel for now. Next, we need to create a slot. So slots are basically placeholders for different options. For example, you may have a slot for rooms and then you have a list of all of the different rooms in your house in that slot. Or maybe you have a slot for colors with all of the different colors that your lights can do, which is what we are actually going to create now. Back on the GitHub repo, again, go to profile, slots, has and then colors and copy the contents of this file. Back on Raspi, create a new slot and this time give it a name of has slash colors, making sure to spell it correctly and spell colors the American way if you're from the UK and then paste the colors into the box and hit save. Again, making sure to cancel the training request. Finally, we need to add a script to Raspi that will download a list of all of the entities from Home Assistant so that it knows which entities it can control. This time, head to the GitHub gist from me that is down in the description, which will have a few commands in it, making sure to only copy the things from the command section for now. Then you will need to SSH to your Home Assistant server to issue the commands. If you're using Windows, then you can use the terminal app to do this, logging in with your SSH credentials. Again, you need to make sure and have protected mode disabled for this add-on for this to work. Once logged in with SSH, paste in the commands from the GitHub gist and hit enter. What this will do is download the latest script from the Raspi repo and saves it onto Raspi. Go back to Raspi once complete and finally you can hit the train button in the top right hand corner and if successful, it should complete without any errors. If you get an error relating to covers, then it's likely you don't have any cover entities in your Home Assistant install and it can't find what it's looking for. So head back to the sentences in the top left, select Home Assistant from the dropdown and then remove the sections relating to covers, save and then the training process should complete successfully. This time when Terminator. you issue a raspy voice command, Turn it should actually lights. respond and it should be able to control your devices oh, in Home home. Assistant. Terminator. Turn on the kitchen lights. Turn kitchen lights on. On the main page, you should also see that the sentence it picks up is for a home assistant command. So that's really cool. We can now control devices pretty easily and even get a voice response back. All very good, all very local and privacy. But what about if we want to be able to create our own voice commands? Because you will notice that while you can control devices, you can't ask Raspi what the temperature in the room is because there is no sentence created for that particular function and Home Assistant doesn't know how to respond to that request either. Terminator, what's the temperature in the kitchen? Now we could spend an entire video on this topic and there's so much to learn here. Much of it I'm still learning myself, but I do want to quickly show you how to create your own custom voice command. Head back to the sentences page and select Home Assistant from the dropdown. At the very bottom of the file, add a new command which starts with the square brackets followed by a descriptive name. In this case, I'm calling mine Has Get Temperature. 
On the line underneath, we enter the sentence that we want Raspi to respond to. So because I want Raspi to get the temperature in a room, I'm going to enter what's the temperature in the room, where we're going to replace room with kitchen, living room, etc. The square brackets around the indicate that the word is optional, and then the has slash rooms and name bit will become clear in just a second. Make sure to save that and then go back into slots and create a new slot called has slash rooms. This slot is going to store the names of our rooms along with the corresponding entities that have our temperature sensors. So firstly, I'm going to enter kitchen colon kitchen underscore temperature, where kitchen is the name of the room I speak in the voice command and kitchen underscore temperature is the corresponding name of the home assistant entity that contains my temperature sensor. This is what we will pass into Home Assistant to get it to return the temperature from. You will need to use the name of your own sensor that has the temperature information that you want to use here. And you don't need to enter the domain first. So you don't need to enter sensor dot first, just the bit that comes after. Hopefully that makes sense. I know this is all getting quite complicated, but we are getting there and hopefully it will all become clear soon. By the way, I only entered one room into my slot for now. You would obviously repeat this process for the rest of your rooms. Once you hit save, you should be able to retrain Raspberry once again, and we just need to do a few things in Home Assistant just to finish things off. Head over to your favorite text editor and edit your configuration.yaml file. And then back on the GitHub gist from earlier, copy the lines of YAML that are inside and paste them into your configuration. There are a few things to note here. The has get temperature line needs to match whatever you named your custom sentence from earlier if you used a different name or you want to set up a different custom command. You can also do whatever you want with this intent. I am just returning text to be read out by the speaker, but it's possible to call home assistant services here or do pretty much whatever you want. The template I'm using is pretty simple. It basically takes the name of the entity that is passed in by Raspi and returns the value of that sensor in a sentence. If you're wondering where name came from, that's a good question and one that's not very well documented. This comes from our custom sentence in Raspi and is passed in and made available to Home Assistant. So name corresponds to kitchen underscore temperature. So when you put them together, you get sensor dot kitchen temperature. Hopefully that is making sense to you, but to be honest, I am still learning this myself. So don't worry if it's not fully there yet. Restart Home Assistant for the final time. And now if you give your custom voice command a go, it should now return the temperature that you asked for. Very quickly, I might add. Terminator, what's the temperature in the kitchen? The temperature is currently 21 degrees. So that is how to add a custom voice command to Raspi and use it to interact with Home Assistant. Of course, there is tons of possibilities you can do there because you have access to run scripts and services and even automations through it. We pretty much just scratched the surface here on all of the things that you can do with it. Anyways, I hope you find this useful. I'm guessing that this was a pretty long video, but we did cover two different ways to install Raspi with a very quick and easy Raspi Junior and the much more complex but advanced full version. Let me know down in the comments which one you are using and what you think of Raspi in general. For me, it's a really cool project and works pretty well. I think it does need some refinement in terms of ease of use for the full version and making the voice nicer out of the box. It's pretty robotic as it is, but I do really like where it's headed and it does offer a pretty great alternative to cloud solutions like Google Home or ALEXA. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and leave this video a like, as well as get subscribed if you aren't already. And I will see you in the next video.